What's going on guys? Drake's not here with Twin Teak and Antique Roadshow right here on Next Door Radio, nextdoorradio.com. Today is the day we are doing a documentary. Uh, Terry Ryan and I are actually headed uh, out on a picking trip and we're going to film the whole process. Really, really excited about it. So um, this is just a start. We're at, we came up to Alliance, Ohio uh, last night, got here about 11 o'clock, about a seven, oh, almost an eight hour trip. So this is what we're doing. This is the start of it. We're here at the Comfort Inn in Alliance, Ohio, and uh, look forward to more videos. Uh, front seat, we got me and Ryan, we got Miss Phillips in the back, and today we just visited one of our, um, we just visited one of our stops, and I'm going to let Ryan tell you a little bit about what we're about to do next. Um, we're headed to Big Daddy's now with Craig's Vader. Um, we just left a, a private pick that we hit a lot. Uh, we bought a moonshine still, um, a really cool uh, brass hanging scale from a meat meat factory um got some kind of off the wall not so much advertising type stuff we bought some some things that don't really fall under that but uh, we'll be bringing them to dixie we'll probably show some stuff tonight um from the road we've got the sale on american pickers 24 7 um headed to craig's now we have uh, another stop yet tonight and uh, a couple of stops tomorrow so um kind of excited and see what uh see what today's stops bring see what tomorrow's stops bring and um go from there but we're kind of outside the box. <laughs> but now, kind of, and that's what, you know, like I talked with Drake when we've talked about this trip and everything. Is you, I mean, obviously in our business, you want signs, you want cans, you want um, that type of stuff. But you, you keep an open mind, and if that stuff doesn't pop up, you can't ruin your trip over it. Um, keep an open mind. You run into primitives. You run into different advertising. Whatever pops up is what you, you've got to be flexible. So um, that's kind of the big thing when we hit the road for a few days is uh, to try not to get too disappointed if something doesn't come in or if you can't buy signs on a trip, you try to stay open and, and maybe another deal will pop up or maybe another um, something you're not always wheeling and dealing in pops up and you can get a deal and, and make a few bucks and move it down the line. So then you pick up different customers that way also. Um, maybe you don't necessarily deal in um, whatever, glass jars or, or Fenton, but you get a truckload of Fenton at a good price, then you buy it and, and you're gaining new customers. Absolutely. The biggest thing, what I've noticed so far is on this trip is the people that I've never gotten to meet before. I'm, this is the first time me and Ryan and Miss Phillips, all, we all hung out together. So it's pretty epic on what we're actually, what we're being able to accomplish on this road trip. It's pretty cool. And seeing the people that he knows, seeing the people that uh, he deals with on a regular basis, it's pretty awesome to, to follow and just learn from his legendariness, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, so it's pretty cool. I'm asking questions along the way. And all these new people that are listening to the show, um, don't be afraid to ask those questions because the biggest thing, I don't know everything about antiques. Yes, do I love it? Absolutely. But I love the people more uh, about this hobby, more than anything, just that normal piece. I did buy a whole box of uh, toys. Well, that was pretty cool. That was a great deal on that. So, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, yeah, look forward to more videos coming. We're just doing clip uh, clips here and there. And then we're going to do more doc uh, talking back and forth in the car along the way. We appreciate it, guys. <sighs> guys, this is our next stop, Big Daddy's Antiques and Collectibles. Uh, the storefront itself is absolutely stunning. The You drive down, the first thing you see is this. The, the front porch is absolutely amazing. I can't thank him enough for opening up. Can't thank him enough for opening up and letting us walk through while he's closed. Ryan just bought something. That's nice. Oh, that's amazing. Ryan's newest pickup. Gun guy, yeah. That's awesome. Then people can can display it. Right. Cool. Yep. All right, we are live. What's going on, man? Uh oh. Thanks for letting us. Uh, thanks for coming in, letting us uh, walk through your shop on your day off. Yeah, it's easier that way. Yeah. <laughs> so this place is packed, man, normally. <laughs> so, Craig's Fader, appreciate you opening up for us. Big Daddy's, what little town are we in? Berlin Center. Berlin Berlin's. Center, Ohio, Northeast Ohio. Yeah, the zip code's E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit, how'd you get started? And uh, tell us a little bit about your store and... and well, I to. planned this more in my 60s, not in my 50s. Um, COVID hit. My wife and I both got COVID in April. Um, this used to be an antique store, and right around April they closed. 
so it's it sat vacant for five months or so and one day I was in my garage and I grabbed a pen to write something down and it had the former owner's name on it and I thought yeah, I should give her a call just to see how she's doing with no intentions of ever opening up an antique store <laughs> and um, somehow she talked me into it she made it easy she had some vendors her old vendors phone numbers and it just seemed to make sense I was already not working for four or five months at that point point. Um, and then you know I, I talked it over the wife is already by that time October probably mid-October and that's the prime time for antiques so I I better hurry up and get this place right as fast as I can so I can get, you know, get the, that's the best time of the year for antiques, you know, it's October, November, December. So we did, and we opened up like November 14th, um, and started off with just a few vendors, and we're up to 25 vendors now with uh, probably two or three on the waiting list, I believe. It's, awesome. it's funny how stuff falls together when you least expect yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No plans and how life just twists and turns and yeah. throws. Um, it kind of leads you, I think, if something's meant to be, it, it, yeah. stuff that you think is an obstacle will lead you in a direction that, right. that we don't expect. And I think probably half of the people in this business, um, something like that has happened and led them to, yeah. to the destination where they're meant to be. Yep. This was, uh, I plan on doing, I do prosthetics, and I plan on doing it for the rest of my life. I was going to semi-retire, like at 60 years old was our plan. And then my wife would just quit her job and run the store, and then I would just keep doing prosthetics because I love it, and I was just going to do it part time. But um, that really fast forwarded. So. so you can double dip if somebody needs a sign and then yeah. loses a limb. Yeah, double <laughs> dip. You can come in here with crutches, missing a leg. Hey, I can, hey, I can hook you up. <laughs> I can hook you up. What size foot you wear? Yeah. <laughs> sure. you want to show us around a little bit. Turn the lights on. And Drake buying along the way. <laughs> yeah, the curb appeal, you walk in and look at um, what a great layout. And of course, you give your wife all the credit in the world for this. Yeah, she's, I'm, <laughs> it would be a mess in here. It almost looked like a flea market if I, uh, if we left the design and everything up to me. She, uh, she's really, really good at organizing stuff. Look at, yeah. Great. You walk in and you get the wow factor. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's what we kind of. One of your buddies looking for Texco. Oh yeah, yep. Kind Jerry Spanbauer is looking for Texaco stuff. So, are you live on Facebook or are you just filming? Terry? Filming. Okay, cool. Yeah, it takes about five minutes to try wow. to get a little bit. Mm. I don't yeah. Know what I'm Good thing is he can cut all that out. <laughs> I'm actually. Gonna this is unbelievable. <laughs> This is absolutely unbelievable here. The hinges on it is, that's a great idea. I don't know if we bought it like that or made it like that. I don't think that's they made them like that. That, that is fantastic. With the bigger street signs, they, they hinged them. Yeah, they we hinged them from the side. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. We just got that booth three days ago. Nice. Yeah. Well, I like, like we said, we like to change things around. I like to get unique things. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Trey, we need this for the radio station board. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't need that? that everybody Absolutely. needs that. And the cool thing, which I hope to find out here very shortly, is the more beer you drink, the less it moves. <laughs> <laughs> the less you notice it moves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. You move more, and it's kind of like right. you're going with it. So, hey, did you shut that thing off or what? Did you die? Not yet. Oh, cool. So, yep. what, what's your what's the uh, since this pandemic's actually hit? Because I closed my store before the pandemic hit, right. and down in Henderson, North Carolina. But what do, what do, what is the the biggest obstacles going with being a store owner what's your biggest obstacles going uh through what we're going through right now getting people in the door because everybody's scared to death um, but that's starting to lighten up and we're getting a lot of people through the door right now um I, I, the biggest obstacle getting the name out there and finding antiques right now to to buy at a reasonable price so we could resell and with auctions being all online, mostly, um, that limits a lot of stuff. You know, we can't go to a lot of, I like live auctions, or yeah, live auctions in person. So with that shut down, that changes things. And let's face it, it's the worst time in 50 years to try to open up a business and hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd rather, I'd rather open up and fail than wonder what if, you know. So I thought, let's just go for it. That's kind of the way I've lived my entire life is yeah. I would rather 
say you did it or say, you know, then to look back 20 years later going, what if, what if, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Right. You know, the only downside is I, I make a lot of things like that, that lighted, that, that used to be a beer sign. And, oh, it looked, awesome. and I like 67 Chevelle Super Sports, so I made it look like a 67 Chevelle. And then State Youngstown is a closed down dealership that sold Chevrolets back in the day. It's, uh, they merged and closed, now it's, it has a different name, but... So I just like, I like making lamps like that fire box lamp and things like that. I don't have time to do that anymore. Um, I wish I had a spot in here where I can do it during the day, and, but I just don't have room to. You had a bathroom. We have a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. This one. So, so yeah, the, I'm, what I'm walking into so far is absolutely stunning. The, the presentation of the uh, storefront is amazing. As soon as you walk in, it's unbelievable what uh, he's got it all staged up. It's it's pretty spectacular what we're actually looking at. And that's pretty, Definitely. pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to have booths, and then all these shelf units are all rented. So there's a vendor in each one of these brown shelf units, and you know the vendors who have a lot of smalls and things like that that don't buy anything big. That's that's cheap for them to rent. You know, it's thirty five dollars a month. Wow. <laughs> and I don't take commission, so. Wow. wow there's not many that do that that's a not very that. and that's a good way to get your feet wet yeah you know, somebody that doesn't that, that wants the income and wants to dabble in the business um but not the responsibility of sitting in a storefront or uh, right. uh to venture into the the owning and and dealing with it day in and day out that's a really good start i think that's probably where most people in this business um i had a did that for the first three or four years myself and then yeah. got my own store but i think about everyone at some point starts there and then you get the addiction yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what happened to me i yeah, started I, out a booth as well yeah and i just didn't like when i was running in booths in two different locations and they both took commissions and that's a drag you know at the end of the month you you, you find out like god if they didn't take commission i'm already paying x amount a month rent yep. i could have made a hundred two hundred dollars more you know and it I just think it motivates people, vendors, to go out and get more stuff and, and, and keep rotating stock and things. And yeah, they don't price it high. as high that way. You know, I want everything. We, we're, we're really selling a lot out of here now, finally. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming around. <laughs> very cool. Awesome. And I hand select every vendor. Yep. I'm very picky on what they bring in. I don't let them bring in, you know, the glass bongs and the <laughs> Chinese knives, yep. you know. I mean, I've had vendors take stuff right back out. They brought stuff in here thinking, you know, people's, um, they don't really understand what collectibles and antiques are, you know. And, and and I get it, you know, they think it's 25 years old, it's an antique. Well, no, not if it's a, you know. A <laughs> an pine, Avon bottle. Yeah, whatever, an Avon right? bottle. <laughs> You know, yep. a pine lamp with a Harley globe on it or something, or, or Harley shade on it, you know. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, but something as new as Hot Wheels, that's collectible. You know, that right. is, I'd be okay with that. I have tons, I know. Yeah, so, and, and that's the biggest thing. Everybody walks in and says how neat it is and how organized it is. And we have a lot better stuff than a lot of other places. So. And fair priced. That's yeah. the biggest thing is you can oh, have an amazing price. store, but if everything is retail or more, um, then you're selling to a collector. You're not selling to a reseller that, right. um, you know, the, the guys on the road swinging by, they'll stop once. You'll see the prices and the next time they're in the area, they don't stop back. So you right. have to keep the prices low so that the flipper and the picker can buy and resell and make a profit. But exactly. um, that, that way, you, you know, you keep your customer base a lot more open. Yeah. And uh, we have regulars, a lot of regulars, which I guess as when I was renting booth space, I never thought that antique stores actually had regulars. I thought it was just <laughs> people that pass through and, you know, they hit the antique stores. But I mean, we have actually regular people, and they won't keep coming back if this stuff isn't rotating around right, and, right. and isn't affordable. And yeah, the antique store by me down in um, uh, Oxford, North Carolina, I go at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Try to hit them at least once a week. Yeah. They're always bringing in inventory, so it's yeah. definitely good for the the new collectors or the ones that are trying to get in, or the ones that's been collecting forever to see stuff new, which is pretty awesome. Right, which <laughs> is also good to have. It does. Make a little laugh and yeah. <laughs> Let me get ahead of them. These are paint clogs. Mm -hmm. Dang. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Man.
doing a little walkthrough. Here's some of the booths. Absolutely stunning display uh, around the store. He's done a really well, good job to get the presentation. This is unbelievable. I would definitely be a regular here. <laughs> Guys, in, in any of these videos or any of these stops that we stop, if you see something in the video that you want to talk about, um, the description of the stores will be at the bottom of the video and we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely get you to the right place the right person to talk to so once again this is Drake's Night with Twin Ticket Antiques Roaster and Ryan Phillips over there and we are uh, very very excited what's what's happening right now we're doing documentaries of antique stores what we love the most about Twin Ticket Antiques Roaster on Nextdoor Radio nextdoorradio.com is the people that we bring along or the people that we talk to the, the same passion the same energy the um, that they bring to the table, why they got started, why they, um, what's their story. And that's the biggest part of what we do. And that's why I love this so much. So guys, we appreciate it. Look forward to more videos coming uh, for the next stop. And if there's anything in this video that you see that you do like, let me know or the description of the store will be in the bottom and we will uh, get you to the right place. Yeah, we appreciate it, Most everybody will pack and ship. So almost everybody. If not, I'm up here about once a month or every six weeks. So um, if you see something that we can't get a hold of, I can get a hold of them and be happy to pack and ship for you or get Absolutely. to a show. So. Yep, Dixie is right around the corner. So if you see this uh, before Dixie, we would love to. Uh, Ryan can definitely help you Absolutely. out on the way to Dixie. Absolutely. Well, cool.